Hello and welcome to part four in uh, my game series. Uh, Blender 2.6, we're creating a simple game here. We have a sky dome set up. We have texture for the grass and I've created a very simple structure. Um, I'd like you to get creative with that, build anything you want um, with a, a group of dynamic objects that have some sort of texture. The next step is to create a projectile that we can launch into this structure. So uh, I'm going to put the cursor anywhere I want, okay? And we're just going to add a, a sphere to this environment. And I'm going to go Add Mesh UV Sphere. And I'm going to kind of put it close to the structure that it will be um, sort of breaking apart so I can scale it appropriately. And, you know, something about that size looks right uh, for now. I'm going to go over to uh, our dynamics, and we're going to make this um, as well dynamic. All right, so right now, if I hit P, of course, it's just going to fall and hit the ground. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and um, we'll set collision bounds to sphere. Okay, over here in the bottom. All right. And uh, now we're going to, now what we want is we want it so that when we hit a key, this particular item is launched into this group of blocks, okay, um, at first. Eventually we'll make it variable, so depending on how long the key has been pressed, the object will have a greater velocity. But for right now, it'll just be hit a key, launch an object. We'll start simple. Um, we're going to move this object to the second layer. So I'm going to hit M, and you can see, I'd like to point this out too, down in the bottom, you can see the object is selected. Down in the bottom left, you can see which object it is. It's sphere point zero zero one. That's going to be important. Our initial sphere is, of course, the, st the sky dome. So this is sphere point zero zero one. Anyway, we're going to move this to the second layer. M, move to layer two. All right. And now we can't see it anymore because it is on the second layer. All right. Right here. And it sort of exists in its own space. Now, you could, do, you could work with this a couple of different ways, okay? Um, up at the very top where it says default, all right, we could move into um, the game logic editor, all right? That's one option, and that's going to, you can mouse in and out, and that's going to give you um, your, you know, sensors, controllers, and actuators. That's one option. You can do game logic. I'm going to leave it in default, though, and where the timeline uh, box is down here in the corner, all right, I'm going to switch that to uh, the joystick. It says Logic Editor. All right, and that just gives me uh, sensors, controllers, and actuators. We can always change that back to the timeline. Uh, we may record this game to uh, an animation later, but for right now, we really don't need the timeline. So I'm going to replace that with our um, Logic Editor for the time being, okay? Uh, the next step, okay, so we've got our sphere waiting for us uh, out there on the second layer. Um, I've got my camera, and I'm going to hit zero on the number pad to look through the camera. And let's go ahead and see if we can't square this camera a little bit uh, for starters. Now, eventually, we'll be moving this camera. I'm going to hit R. I'm going to look through the camera, and the camera is selected because the outer part of it is highlighted. I'm going to hit R twice, R, R, okay? And that's going to give me kind of freedom of motion to move it. And now I'm going to hit R once, and it's just going to allow me to spin it. So hitting R twice when you're looking through the camera and then hitting R once is a pretty good way to sort of position your camera if you know you're close. And this is, this is pretty much right on. This is going to work. Okay. Um, so I'm going to snap the cursor now. I'm going to hit period on the number pad to zoom in on the camera. Period on the number pad to zoom to an object. Uh, I'm going to snap the cursor to the camera, and we're going to add an empty where the camera is. So I'm going to hit Shift S and we're going to go cursor to selected. And the red and white cursor there is now going to jump all right, to the camera. You can see it's there. Now we're going to add an empty at that location. Um, I'm going to choose add and then empty. Boom. Okay. And if I zoom in on that you can see we have an empty and a camera. Now we're going to parent the empty to the camera. Okay, so that when we move the camera, the empty moves with the camera. Okay, uh, in our last set of lessons where we did an animation, it was the exact opposite relationship. We moved the empty and the camera moved. In this one, we'll move the camera and the empty will go wherever the camera goes. So I'm going to hold down shift 
and I'm going to right click on the camera and I'm going to make sure the camera is a lighter color than the empty. Okay? And I'm going to hit control P, set parent to object. All right. And I can test that just by um, selecting the camera by itself and then hitting G and you can see the empty moves with that. All right, so I've got my empty parented to the camera. And I'm now going to select the empty and we're going to make it launch that sphere. Okay? So with the empty selected down here at the bottom with our logic buttons, okay, I'm going to choose sensors um, and we're going to add one. We're going to make it a keyboard sensor. And for the key, I'm going to click inside of the key button there. It says press a key. Let's go with spacebar for right now. It's your call. Under add controller, I'm going to choose and. And then over add actuator, I'm going to choose edit object. Just like that. Okay? And we're going to draw lines now. You've got to connect these boxes together. We'll be using this um, in class. So connecting your um, sensor to your actuator is important. So we've got a keyboard sensor that is the space bar. We've got the and and then we've got edit object. Now, edit object is set to add object, okay? So I'm going to click here, and I'm going to scroll down my list. I'm hitting the down arrow now to scroll down, and I'm going to find sphere.001 because we want to add that every time somebody hits the space bar, okay? Um, and we're going to give it, it's, it's asking, okay, when you add the object, do you want to give it a linear velocity? And the answer is yes. Now, the first field is X, the second field is Y, and the third field is Z, right? So let's take a look at my, my arrows here. Um, I've got the red arrow in Blender is the X axis, the green arrow is the Y axis, and the blue arrow is the Z axis. So, and it's always pointing, the arrows point in the positive direction, okay? So um, in this case, all right, you can see that I want to ha give the uh, sphere um, a velocity along the x-axis or the red arrow, okay? And I want it to move in the opposite direction the red arrow is pointing because if the red arrow is pointing in a positive direction, I'm going to want to add this sphere so that it launches in a negative direction, all right? In short, based on where my uh, arrows are pointing and the fact that, you know, the way this is lined up, down at the bottom in the linear field for the first field, which is our x-box, okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write negative 10, negative 10 just like that all right so every time we hit the space bar it's going to add a sphere 0 0.001 and it's going to give it a linear velocity of negative 10. i'm going to look through the camera by hitting zero okay and i'm going to hit p to play this game all right and that's basically what the user is going to see and let's go ahead and hit the space bar and you can see that it does launch spheres every time i hit the space bar and I can sort of move out of the camera view. You do not have to play in camera mode. I'm going to hit P. And uh, I'm going to launch the spheres just like that. And you can see that it does knock the top block off of my structure. I have everything working correctly. Um, if you have your empty adding objects like that, every time you press a key, you're done with this tutorial. We'll be refining that in the next.